Hello, my name is Keshwani. This K E S H W A N R Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving GRE math problems out of this book here. The official guide to the GRE, the revised general test. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The problem that we are about to solve is the one that you will find on page number 246 and today is our lesson number 158. Let's turn to page 246 and part C. Part C. We have, we have an equation there that is given to us. Number 21. This is what is given to us. They tell us that f of x equals f of x equals 5 minus five minus x plus two x plus two whole squared five minus x plus two whole squared. The very first thing we have to understand and the very first thing we need to recognize here is that this is actually an equation of a parabola. That's what we are doing here. This is this is this is a parabola. Now the standard the standard form of parabola that we have come across many times looks something like this. It's just y equals x squared. That's what this is. And over here, obviously if I'm going to call this function f, I cannot call that also f. That's going to be confusing. I'm going to change its name. I'm going to give this guy a new name. I'm going to call it k of x question is how do we go from y equals to x squared to y equals to 5 minus x plus 20 squared. That transition from here to here is what we have to understand first. And in the, in the process of understanding that concept as to how we go from this basic form, the standard form of parabola, this is a standard form. How do we go from this guy to this guy? This guy here, f of x, f of x, let's call him f of x. Let's call him Mr. F. Mr. F is the grandpa. He is the grandpa. And from Mr. X comes this guy. So we're going to follow the step-by-step -step transition from, from, from the basic formation to the formation uh, to, to the form that, that is presented to us before we do anything at all with, with that. And the reason we need to do that is because if you understand the transition from the standard form of the parabola, which is y equals x squared, to anything else that is given to you, if you understand the transition right away, immediately, by just by looking at it, you can visualize it, you can picture it, what's going to have, what's going on with the parabola, how it is being picked up, where is it being shifted, is it being shifted to the left or to the right, or is it going up or is it going down? If you can visualize all of those things just by looking at it like like that, then half the battle is won rest is downhill. Do you understand? I'm going to make this thing, I'm going to tape this uh, questions in two, two days. Today we're just going to talk about how to go from here to here. That's all. So let's start our journey. We're going to start our journey with the grandpa F. Grandpa F looks like this. And of course we know what the shape of this graph is. We have seen it many a times. And I'm not going to take uh, uh, too, too much time into going over this basic form. And if you're having trouble as to what I'm about to explain, or for that matter, anything in this in this video at all, go back and watch this video if you have not watched them already. They 124, 125, 128, 129, 154. I have spent five days talking about parabolas. This is not something something that we're doing for the for, for the very first time. So this is what the basic 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 uh, parabola looks like. When x is zero, when x is zero y is 0, when x is plus or minus 1, when x is plus or minus 1, you put it here plus or minus 1 squared, plus or minus 1 squared is going to give you 1, so y is 1, so when it's x is minus 1 or plus 1, y is 1, when x is minus 2 or plus 2, y is 4, and so on and so forth. And that's what our parabola looks like. What we're going to do now 
what we're going to do now is we're going to pick up this original parabola, this parabola in the standard form that sets the origin, and, and the line of symmetry is the y-axis. We're going to pick it up and we're going to shift it. We're going to shift it to the left 20 units. Okay, we're going to pick it up and shift it to the left 20 units. Okay, let's pick up this guy. Let's ask grandpa F to move 20 units to the left. So let's do that. We're going to pick it up and move it 20 units to the left. So here is our x-axis, here is our y-axis, and here is our origin which is 0, 0, and here is the negative 20. This is negative 20. Right here. And the parabola is going to sit now, parabola is going to sit now, not at 0, 0, uh, not at, at, at the origin, but at negative 20. It would be nice if I can make it symmetric. Well, now what happens is that, listen very carefully, now what happens is that, the thing with this thing is that once you understand it once, once you understand it once, the concept, then all the transition that you're going to see from now on of shifts of left and right, it's going to be a snap. You will know right away just by looking at it as to, first of all, that it is a parabola. Secondly, you will know precisely where it is being shifted. Do you understand? So before, let's look carefully, before y was 0 when x was 0, as we saw a little while ago, y was 0 when x was 0, right here. y was 0 when x was 0. Now, y is 0 when x is negative 20. Now, before y was 0 when x was 0. Now, y is going to be 0 when x is 20. Question is, how do we represent that in our function? How do we represent that in our new function? Well, here's a, here's a problem. Y is equal to, the original function is this, y equals x squared. If we were to put negative 20 here, because that's what x is here, if we were to put negative 20 in this thing, negative 20 squared does not equal 0. We need y to be 0. We need y to be 0 when x is negative 20, as you can clearly see there. If, you get a, if we were to pick it up and move it 20 units to the left, then y is going to be 0 when x is negative 20. But problem is negative 20 squared does not equal 0. How do, what do we have to do to this guy to make this quantity 0? Well, here's what we have to do to it. Here's what we need to do to it. We need to go to this guy and tell this guy, listen, you are negative 20. You are no good to us. We need to make you 0. How do we make negative 20 into a 0? By giving him 20. By giving him 20. Voila. Now, now x plus 20, our x is negative 20, negative 20 plus a 20 is 0, and 0 squared is indeed 0, which is what we need y to be. Let's do one more. Before, before y was 1, when x was 1, positive 1 or negative 1, when x was positive 1 or negative 1. Before, our function was like this, y equals x squared. So if x is positive 1 or negative 1, y was 1. That was the situation before. But now it turns out that x is, now it turns out that y is 1 when x is neg negative 19 or negative 18. That's our problem. Negative, eight, negative 19 or negative 18. You see? You go, you go one unit, you go one unit to the right of negative 20, you end up at negative 19. You go one unit to the left of, uh, that should be negative 21. negative 21. So here is the problem again. Here is our problem one more time. Before, before, y was, y was, y, y was equal to x squared. The problem is that now, now, when, and therefore, when y was 1, when, when x was 1, y was 1. Because 1 squared is 1. That was the situation before. When y was when y was one, before it says before it says y was one when x was positive or negative one, whether it was positive one 
or negative 1, y was equal to 1. Now the problem is, x is not positive 1, x over here is negative 19. x over here is negative 19. The question is, what do I have to do to this guy so that I get 1 here for y? What do I have to do to 19 to get, to get 1 so that I get 1 for the value of y? Well, what I have to do is add 20 to it. And if I add 20 to it, I force it to be the 1. You see? Now, now we have x plus 20 squared, negative 19, negative 19 plus a 20 is going to give us a positive 1. Positive 1 squared is indeed 1. Or, or, it turns out y is also 1 when x is negative 21. So let's put it negative 21 here. If x happens to be negative 21, if x happens to be negative 21, negative 21 plus a 20, we get a negative 1. You see? We end up with the same situation as we had before, which is when the quantity in this parenthesis, so no longer, do not think in terms of x anymore, think of the quantity in the parenthesis. When the quantity in this parenthesis is positive 1 or negative 1, y is 1. Which is exactly the situation that, was, that we had before. Exact same situation as what we had before. Before, y was y equals x squared. Do not think of this as y equals to x squared. Think of y equals to the quantity in the parenthesis being squared. And that is what it is right now. The quantity in the parenthesis, this parenthesis right now here, that is being squared. The, relation, the relationship between x and y is y equals quantity in the parenthesis being squared. And quantity in the parenthesis now, when x is negative 21, the quantity in the parenthesis is negative 1, and negative 1 squared is in fact 1. Let's do one more, one last one. Before, before, when the quantity in the parenthesis, when the quantity in the parenthesis was positive 2 or negative 2, y was 4. That was the situation before. Now, we have to make the quantity in the parenthesis 2 again, in order for us to get y equals to 4, which is going to happen here. I'm going to have to extend this out a little bit. Negative 18. And negative 22. So now, when x is, x is, x is negative 18, when x is negative 18 or negative 22, y is 4. This was 1. y is 4. How do we make the quantity in the parentheses equal to, so the, uh, what do we have to do to the quantity in the parentheses so that we get 4 for the value of y? Well, same thing as before. Let's start again from, from scratch. Let's start from the scratch before. Before, the quantity in the parentheses when it was squared, when the quantity in the parentheses was positive 2 or negative 2 squared, we get y equals to 4. Now it turns out that was the situation before. When x was 2, y was 4. When x was negative 2, the y was 4. Now it turns out that y is 4 when x is negative 18. x is negative 18. So what do I have to do? What do we have to do? Well, we take our quantity in parenthesis and we make the adjustment. We compensate. We give, we give it a compensation. We give it extra 20. We give it extra 20. So, when x is negative 18, we put our negative 18 in here. Watch what, 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 what happens. Negative 18 and a positive 20 is going to give us a positive 2, and positive 2 squared is indeed 4. So now this function shows what's going on with the relationship between x and y. This function tells us that when x is negative 18, when x is negative 18, y equals 4, which is what we see here. When x is when is x is negative 18, which is 2 away from negative 20, which is which is which is where it's sitting. When x is negative 18, y is 4. When x is negative 22, y is also 4. Let's see what happens when we put in negative 22 for x. If x happens to be negative 22, negative 22, negative 22 and a positive 20 is going to give us negative 20. 
and that again is 4. So that is our new function. So our new function that we arrive at is this guy. To put it more succinctly, to put it more briefly, here's what's going on. Okay, listen carefully, here's what's going on. We had our we had our original parabola sitting nicely and comfortably, nicely and comfortably at the origin, at 0, 0. He was happy, he was content, he was nice. And then we go to this, this grandpa F and we disturbed him. We said, Would you won't you please get up and move 30, 20 seats to the left? So we picked it up and we moved it, we shifted it. Mathematicians do not call it move it, they use they prefer the term shift. So we picked it up and we shifted it 20 units to the left. What's going on as a virtue of that movement, as a virtue of that shifting rather, as a, as a, virtue, as a virtue of that shift rather, as a virtue of the shift from 0 to negative 20, what's going on is that the underlying relationship between x and y has not changed. They are st the, 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 the value of the y's happen in the same pattern as before, except everything is taking place 20 units too early. It's the same play, it's the same plot, it's the same story, Everything is going happening in the same manner as before. Nothing is unpredictable. Nothing is being disturbed in terms of the relationship between X and Y. But the story is taking place 20 hours too early. So, because everything is taking place 20 units too early, to negate that, to compensate it for, for, for that fact, because of the fact that every X is 20 units deficient, because of the fact that every X value is 20 units deficient, because it's happening 20 units too early, we have to give every value of x an extra 20 units. That's what that is. That's all it is. We're done with that part. Okay? Because if I, if, we, if I keep explaining, you know, we are almost approaching the point of we are beating the dead horse, I, I believe is the, is the expression. So that's it, we're done. That's it. Let's give it a name. Obviously, we can't call it f of x because this is a new function. So I'm going to call it a, a g of x. That's our g of x. Because it will be silly to give it the same name as before because it's a new function. It, it requires a new name. Now, now, so that was the step number one. The step one, so that's it. I'm going to erase all of this thing. We're done with it. We're done with the step one. The step one was, we start from the very beginning. We start with we start with f of x, which is y equals x squared. Step one, step one was shift f 20 units to the left. And when we do that, the new, new, new relationship we get is x plus 20 squared equals y. We gave it a new name, we call it g of x. Now, step two. This step two, we are going to pick up, we are going to pick up g, the new function, we are going to pick up g, the new function, this, this parabola here, and we are going to flip it. We are going to pick up g, and we are going to, we are, going to flip it. Ask yourself what's going to happen when you flip it. What's going to happen is that all the values as a result as a result all the values of y will be same as before except they will all be negative. They can be same values except they're going to be negative. So instead of, instead of y being 1 when x is negative 19, let me do it with my pencil here so that I don't block it with my hand here. Instead of y being 1, instead of y being 1 when x is, uh, when x is negative 19, when x is negative 19, the y is going to be negative 1. Instead of y being 1 when x is negative 21, now the y is going to be 1 
when the y is going to be negative 1, when x is negative 21. That's all. Before, y was 4, y was 4 when x was negative 19. Now, y is going to be negative 4 when x is negative 19. Just like this. Watch here. Just like this here. It's the exact same guy. Nothing has changed. He has just been flipped. Of course, my, my thing is not drawn very nicely, but you get the idea. It's not drawn very nicely, but you get the idea. That's it. We're going to flip it. The question is, when we do that, how do we express that transition in the form of the in, the in the language of the algebra, so that the world knows by looking at the equation that this thing has been flipped? What do we have to do to it? Well, what we have to do to it is right here. We just said it. What happens to it? All the values of the y's are going to be the same as before, except they are all negative. So all we have to do is pick up all the values of y from before. Okay, I need the room. I need the room, so I have to erase it, everything. Okay, so that was the step number two. We are going to pick up G, this guy G here, and we are going to flip it. And as a result, all the values of the Y are the same as before, except they are negative. And therefore, the question is, how do we show that? Well, that's very simple. We take all the values of Y and we multiply them by negative 1. We take all the values of Y and we multiply them by negative 1. And since we are multiplying this side of the equation by negative 1, we have to multiply this side of the equation by negative 1. And of course, negative 1 times x plus 2, 20 squared is same as negative x plus 20 squared. And that is our new function. And since this is our new function, we can't give it the same name as before. We, had, we started out with f, then we went to g. That was our, that, that was our step number 1. And uh, that was our step number 1. This is our step number 2. The step number 2 is when we flip it. And we have to give it a new name. Let's call it... We have f, g, let's call it h of x. Voila. And now I'm going to draw this new function, h of x, the flip parabola freehand. Because if I try to draw it with the scale, it doesn't come out very nice here. I'm just going to do it freehand. Remember, this is not 0, 0. This is x is negative 20. x is negative 20. y is 0. So before it was like this, now it is going to be like this. That's all. All the values of the y's are the same as before, except they are negative. So if this is 4, this is negative 4. If this is 1, if this is 1, this is negative, negative 1. And so on and so forth. But the relationship between x and y has not changed. The same relationship except it's been flipped, it's been multiplied by negative. That's what it is. That's our new function. So that's step number two. Let's do one more time. One last step. Step number three. Step three. Now, we are going to, we are going to pick up H. We are going to pick up H and shift it up 5 units. We are going to shift it up 5 units. So this is this is our this is our G. This is G. This is G and this is the function F H. H of X equals negative X plus 20 squared. So we're talking about this guy here. So listen, I need my hand so you can see it. So I'm going to go up to edge, I'm going to pick it up, I'm going to pick up edge, and I'm going to shift it up. I'm going to pick it up and shift it. One, two, three, four, five. Five units to, on the y-axis. Again, it's the same parabola, same relationship between x and y is going to exist as before, except the values of the y, because I'm shifting it up, I'm shifting it up five units up, the values of y are going to be five more than before for every given value of x. As a result, let's put it here. We're going to I'm going to raise step 1 and 2 because I need to write. As a result,
all the values of y are going to be the same as before for each given value of x except they are going to be 5 units more they're going to be 5 units more for example for example before listen carefully before y was 0 when x was negative 20 y was 0 when x was negative 20 now y is going to be 5 when it's negative, x is negative 20. I'm going to read it. As a result, all the values of y are going to be same as before for each given value of x. For a given value of negative 20, y was 0. That value is going to be same, except he is going to be 5 more than before. So, instead of, instead of being 0, y being 0 here, y is going to be, y is going to be positive 5. 1, 2, 3, 4. Four, this was 4 and 5. Five. Before, before y was before y was negative 1 when x was this is negative 20, this is negative 21. Let's put it here. Before y was 20 or y was 0 when x was negative 20. Now y is going to be 5 when x is negative 20. 5. 5 more. Before. Instead of being 0, it's going to be 5. Before y was 1 when x was negative 21, negative 19 or negative 21, negative 19 or negative 21. Now, y is going to be 5 more than that, 1 plus 5 or 6 when x is negative 19 or negative 21. That's all, because we have shifted it. All the values of the y's are going to be exact same thing for a given value of x. All the values of the y's are going to be exact same thing as the gift for a given value of x. Plus, except it's going to be 5 more than that. So it's going to be exact same thing as before, you just have to add 5 to it. Because it's been, the whole thing has been shifted up. The values of the y's have been forcibly increased by 5. Question is, what is the equation going to look like? Well, that's very straightforward. The equation is going to look like same as before. You just simply add 5 to the value of x. Our h of x is this. Our h of x is this. Negative x plus 20 squared. Let's give it a new name here. H i, let's call it j. H i j. j of x is going to be same as before. Exact same as before. Except 5 more. And that 5 more is our adjustment. That 5 more is our adjustment. Except when you have a situation like this, when, when it's, pref it's, it's, pref it's preferred that you write 5 first because it's positive, and then you put down x plus 20 squared. I mean to put all of this in the red ink, because that's not the emphasis. The emphasis is the adjustment. The adjustment is 5. Well, this is what's given to us. This is what they give you in the part C. I'm going to draw the same graph now freehand. So remember, this is now, we're sitting at 5. We're sitting at 5. The value of the y, value of the y is 5. For what value of x? Well, value of the y is 5. But for what value of x? Well, same as before, negative 20. Right here, negative 20. 
That's it. That's your new. Uh, as a matter of fact, one well, one of the things they ask you in this thing is the, but well, they don't actually specifically ask for it. But that's your vertex. That's your vertex. Now that we understand where that guy is sitting, now we recognize him. Now we can talk about it. Now we can analyze it. Do you understand? So let me draw this thing freehand. One last graph. We're going to draw this guy. J of x freehand. One, two, three, four, five. He's going to sit somewhere here. He's going to sit somewhere here. And what is this thing? Is this the origin? No, this is not the origin. This is not the origin. Remember, the very first thing we did was we picked it up from the origin and we shifted it to left 20 units. So this is not zero. X is 20. Uh, X is negative 20. This point, x is negative 20 and y is 0. Now this point is going to be x is negative 20 and y is going to be 5. And that is your vertex. I'm going to start our story. I'm going to begin our story. I'm going to begin our story from this point here tomorrow. Right from this point we're going to start our story. Okay? I'll see you tomorrow. Bye now.